In today's video, we're going to show you how to set up Visual Studio Code or also known as VS Code for short. This is a new development platform that Marlin 2.0 and our Unified 2.0 are going to use to compile firmware for your 3D printer. So I'm going to show you guys all the steps needed to install this so you can compile your own firmware on your machine. So let's get started. So I know a lot of people get intimidated when they start seeing code on their screen and I want to let you know you shouldn't, especially if you're going to be using our Unified 2 firmware and not regular Marlin. You just have to take your time and read all the directions and make sure that you're doing things correctly. And if you do have a question, there are plenty of resources out there to get help with setting up your firmware, including our forum and our Facebook group. So if you guys are familiar with previous versions of Marlin or our Unified 1 firmware, you'll be used to using the Arduino IDE to compile your firmware. VS Code replaces the Arduino IDE for compiling your firmware. Now, there are some drawbacks with 8-bit boards that are a little more complicated in terms of flashing the board, but today we're focusing on getting VS Code set up so you can compile your firmware. We will put out later videos showing you how to actually use VS Code with the Arduino IDE to upload to an 8-bit board, as well as third-party tools to upload a compiled file to your printer board. In addition to using VS Code to compile firmware, we also need to install a couple of other prerequisites. There's an extension called Platform.io, and Platform.io also relies on Python. So once VS Code is installed, we'll need to install the Platform.io extension, and then also install Python if you don't have this on your machine already. If you do have Python on your machine already, make sure you're running the latest version, which at the time of making this video is 3.8.5. Obviously, this video is not going to be updated because we can't edit videos once they've been posted to YouTube, but just make sure you have the latest version of Python installed when you're setting this up and keep your system up to date. So to make things easy, we actually have step-by-step -step instructions at vscode.th3dstudio.com, and that's where we're going to head because we also have links to all the downloads that you'll need to set up VS Code. So let me switch over to my machine here and I'll show you guys how to set up VS Code with Platform.io and Python on your machine so you can compile your own firmware. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to vscode.th3dstudio.com and this will take you to a page that has all the links we're going to need to do this. Now, VS Code with the Platform.io extension will require Python. I'm not going to pre-install Python because many people are not going to have this installed already. I'm going to go ahead and click the VS Code download page to take me to the actual page to download VS Code. I'm on Windows and it does support 7, 8, and 10. So go ahead and click the download link and it should start automatically. If not, they do have a direct download link here. And go ahead and load the application. This is going to launch the setup. When you get the setup here, you're gonna do the I accept thing and sign away your firstborn child and anything else Microsoft wants you to give up. Click next, next. And I usually create a desktop icon, you don't need to. And I would leave the add to path option checked. Go ahead and click next. And now it's going to install VS Code. Now, once VS Code is done installing, you'll get this completion window. Go ahead and click finish and VS Code will automatically launch. I'll go ahead and make this larger for you guys. VS Code will bother you to ask if Microsoft can collect usage data. Go ahead and just click the X button. Where we want to go is the extensions icon on the left here. And we're going to type platform IO. And if you give it a sec, it'll pull up the platform IO IDE. You can click on this and you can either click install here or here. It'll show installing. Now, if you already have Python installed on your computer, this will go ahead and install automatically and then it'll ask you to restart. As you can see here, it's popping up the platform IO information and on this machine here, it did prompt me to install Python. If for some reason this doesn't come up, you can also access this by clicking this right here and it will show the notifications. You can go ahead and click here and hit open. This will take you to the platform IO documentation page. And if you notice here, they want you to check the add Python to path option when you're installing this. So make sure you do this. 
To actually get to the Python download page, you can click here, download the latest Python. And if for some reason this page doesn't load, we do have a direct link right here to the Python installation page as well. Go ahead and download the latest version of Python, version three or higher is recommended, and go ahead and load the Python installation. Make sure you check add Python to path and then hit install now. Now, if you have user account control, you will need to confirm this. So go ahead and click yes. And this is going to install Python on your computer. One minute, 37 seconds later. As you can see here, the installation is done. Make sure to click the disable path length limit. This isn't needed, but it's something I do just so I don't have issues down the road with that actual path getting too long. So go ahead and click that and confirm and you can go ahead and click close. So if we go back to VS Code, you can see it's still waiting. And if you click try again, it won't actually work. You have to close VS Code. So actually exit out of it. And then go ahead and launch it again. And when you launch it, Platform IO will go ahead and resume the installation. So you can see here, if we click this, it's now installing Platform IO. And depending on the speed of your computer and your internet connection, this may take 30 seconds or this may take a couple of minutes. Right now it's pulling down all the files for Platform IO from the internet to your computer and then installing them. So we're gonna go ahead and let this install and then come back. Two very boring minutes later. So as you can see here, it says it's been successfully installed and we need to reload the window. It also says here, please restart VS Code. So you can either close out VS Code or just hit the reload now button. And if Platform IO is successfully installed, you'll see this PIO home come up. And if you don't want to see this, I usually uncheck this. You can go ahead and uncheck the show at startup option and then close this out. You can see here on the left side, we have a new little icon for Platform IO. And that's it. VS Code is now set up to compile firmware for your 3D printer. We did it. We did it. Look amazing! Look at that! This video is intended just to be a guide on how to set up VS Code. We will release other guides later to show you how to flash different boards, whether it's a 32-bit board or an 8-bit board, but I will just talk about it briefly here. Most 32-bit boards, to flash them, you just take the binary file. These binary files will usually be in the PIO folder that is in the folder where your firmware source code is. In the PIO folder, there will usually be a build folder and then one with the CPU name, and that is where those files will be stored. After you run a successful compile in VS Code, there will be a firmware.bin file, and some machines will have a file named firmware dash and a bunch of numbers. Other boards like the Easy Board will just use firmware.bin. So just as a quick example here, I have our firmware here for the Ender 3 V2, and I've already ran a compile. You can see here at the bottom, it says environment success, and this is the CPU that the Creality 422 board uses. Now to actually compile the firmware, I hit the little checkbox here, and it goes and builds it. So once you have all your options uncommented and set, whether you're using the Unified 2 firmware like I'm using now, or you're using Marlin, you set all your options and then you hit this little checkbox. And this is going to generate that binary file you need for flashing your 32-bit board. Now, if we look on the left here, VS Code has a list of all the folder directories for the firmware. If you look at the top, you'll see the PIO folder and the build folder. And inside that build folder, you have the CPU that you're compiling for. So because this is the STM32 F103 RET6, that's the folder this is in. Now, if you look in here, you can see there's the firmware.bin file that it just compiled. Now, if you've done multiple compiles, this particular board will have a different file name for each time you compile. And that's because this board needs a different file name every time when you flash. Other boards like our easy board will just have a firmware.bin. And every time you turn the printer on, it'll look for that file. And if it finds it, it'll flash and then rename it. Some of the boards like the Creality boards will not rename it and it needs a different file name every time you flash. But if you right click on the actual CPU folder here and hit reveal in file explorer, you'll get this easily accessible. Now you could manually browse to this, but I like using this because it takes me right there. So if I go into the STM32 folder for this board, and like I said, this 
folder here will be different depending on what board you're compiling for, but inside this build folder, you will have one for whatever processor that's on the board you're compiling for. So if I double click this, you'll see there's a bunch of files and the only one we care about is the one ending in .bin. If you have multiple ones, meaning you've compiled a couple times, you can just hit the sort and you wanna grab whatever one has the latest date. So this file I would copy to my SD card, put it into the printer with the power off and turn it on. When you turn it on, the board's gonna see that file, flash that firmware, and then you'll have the updated firmware. Now, when it comes to the 8-bit boards, there are ways you can upload the firmware like you're used to doing with the Arduino IDE, but it's a little more complicated of a setup. You can also grab the binary file, which is usually a .hex, and use a third-party tool like AVR Dudes or Xloader to upload the firmware to your printer. So you don't even need to have the Arduino IDE but we will be putting out a video showing how to do that with VS Code, leveraging the Arduino IDE, and also just using a third party tool like AVR Dudes or Xloader to flash that compiled file to your board. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but again, this video is focusing on just getting VS Code set up so you can compile firmware for your printer board. And this works for Marlin 2.0 and our Unified 2 firmware. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was clear and concise to get VS Code running on your printer. And I wish you guys all the best. And as always, happy printing.